Hello and welcome to the Ohio Utilities Protection Service Call Before You Dig webinar. My name is Paula Hyman from the Ohio LTAP Center and I'm going to be your technical support for today's webinar. Just a few items before we begin. If you have questions throughout this presentation, please put those in the questions pod and your, present, your presenter will address your questions periodically. Um, everyone go ahead and locate that questions pod. You can just type a hello, hi, just to make sure you know where it's located and how it works. Lastly, this webinar is being recorded. Providing that the webinar recording is successful, the YouTube link will be emailed to all participants and uploaded to our LTAP website. I want to thank you in advance for your participation. And with that, I'll pass things off to Mr. Ray Brushhart. Ray? All right. Thank you, Paula. Good morning, everybody. This is Ray Brushhart from Ohio LTAP. And uh, I want to take a little bit of time here to introduce Mr. George Gillespie. He's our presenter today from the Ohio Utilities Protection Service. I've uh, first met George about 12 years ago because uh, uh, here at Ohio LTAP, we attend a, a whole lot of trade shows and conferences and we always have a booth. And uh, I first met George because he always has booths at the same conferences and trade shows. So we've gotten to know each other over the years. And um, of course, we've had so much success with webinars since the lockdown a couple years ago that we thought we'd keep the ball rolling. And uh, so I had an idea for this webinar because it's that special time of year where we've got all the local um, public agencies, roadway workers and uh, contractors this time of year. They're focusing on their projects and they'll be doing a lot of digging. And so we put this webinar together uh, just so that uh, George can speak to uh, you know a lot of the reasons why and when you need to call OOPS and uh, also the latest methodologies on uh, the best way to contact OOPS. And so there's nobody better to speak about this than George. He's ha has over 50 years experience in the utility business and he's been associated with the Ohio Utilities Protection Service for over 20 years. He and his uh, passion for his job really shines through and that is to communicate to everyone uh, that they definitely need to call before they dig. So with that, I'll pass things on to Mr. George Gillespie and uh, you can take it from here, George. Well, thank you so much, Ray, and good morning to everyone. And uh, yes, I'm here to help you understand the call before you dig process here in Ohio. And when people ask me uh, where I work, I, I'm saying now that I work for the Ohio Utilities Protection Service, now doing business as Ohio 811. And what I do is I go around the entire state every day, spreading the good news to call before you dig, to protect the public, protect the environment, protect the utilities, protect me from me and you from being hurt. And I'm sad to say that I've had to deal with fatalities on the job in my career. So here in the next hour or so, I am going to take you what I wanna say A to Z on the whole call before you dig process here in Ohio. Um, you know, I won't sit very long on one certain topic, but I wanna make sure that I cover everything with you today. We're going to talk about the process. We're going to talk about the law. We're going to talk about damages. OK, so hopefully you have a great idea here in the next hour of what the call before you dig process is all about. And please remember that this process is just as important for your work life as your home life. Homeowners are required to call also. So let's get started here. Oh no, it's not moving. I let it sit too long, I think. There we go. Okay. Ohio Utilities Protection Service is a call center. We do not locate lines. It's the utility's responsibility to locate their facilities. And that's usually 99.9% .9 of the time is to the DMARC point. Like on your house, that would be that little box for where your cable TV or your telephone drop is terminated, where your power meter is, so on and so forth. Again, we are a communication company. 
And before we get started, remember me saying too that it's just as important for homeowners to call as uh, professional excavators. This is an incident that happened down in Southern Ohio where a gentleman wanted to extend the downspouts out to the edge of his pavement right there. So Wednesday, he went down, scheduled to get the walk behind trencher for Saturday morning. He did not call our service. Saturday morning, he picks up the trencher. You can see there in the photo that he trenched approximately 10 feet. He got into his own gas line and it blew up on him. He had 60% of his body was covered with second degree burns and he spent six weeks in the hospital. This is a great example, people, of where you can take the horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Here's the piece of equipment, and you can see right there that there's our big sticker that says, call before you dig. Do you think he wished he would have taken the two minutes to make the free call? I think so. Okay, here's what we're going to talk about in the nuts and bolts of the presentation. We're going to talk about Ohio 811 excavator responsibilities, utility owner responsibilities. We're gonna talk about the Ohio Universal Marking Standards. I think they're awesome. And hopefully you'll understand them when we're done with the presentation. Types of excavation activities and also things to remember. We were founded in 1972 in Youngstown, Ohio by East Ohio Gas, Cleveland Illumination and Ohio Bell Telephone Company. Today we have right at a little bit over 1600 members, but that does not meet my expectations. The Ohio Revised Code states that every utility in Ohio is to be a member of a one call. And until 2016, there was not a darn thing we can do about it. Now, if we run into a non-member company, you have the ability to call up the PUCO, file a complaint against the non-member and then the PUCO will give it to the Underground Technical Committee, and they will probably get them to come on real, real quick. And we will talk more about the law towards the end of the, end of the presentation. And yes, this year is our 50th anniversary. We will be celebrating that in August up in by our office in North Jackson, Ohio. We are a not-for-profit company. I wish I would have thought of this. I wish I'd have thought how easy it is. When you call our service, as soon as you hang up, we send it to the utilities. The utilities pay a small price for that dig notification. That's how easy it works. And that price fluctuates every year. It all depends on how much money we need to run the company. And in November, our executive director will go in to the board of trustees, there's 21 of them, and he'll say, this is how much money I need to run the corporation next year. They cut, not cut, well, they decide and talk for a while, and usually they say, okay, here it is. That's how the companies run. It's it's so simple, and it's it's really neat how great it works. We are a free service. We're open 24-7, 365. One change we had to make last September, we were having trouble keeping some operators, which we call CSRs. And with the size of them depleting, we went to a process we, where we only take routine tickets from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. if you are calling them in, okay? We're still open 24 seven for emergencies and short notices. But yes, routines, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Again, we do not locate the lines. And this is pretty cool here, the last bullet point on this slide. The Ohio oil and gas people, they had their own one call. But on January the 1st of 2019, they came under our umbrella. This is so neat. And, and I'm happy to say this because now our members, of course, we notify them. We notify their people, about 143 companies, I believe, came under our umbrella. So now Ohio is a true one call, and it's really, really good for safety reasons. What's an excavation? An excavation is the use of tools, powered equipment, or explosives to move earth, rock, or other materials in order to penetrate or bore or drill into the earth. 
or to demolish any structure, whether or not it is intended that the demolition will disturb the earth. This includes post hole digging, landscaping, sign installation, et cetera. So people, anytime you penetrate the ground surface at work or at home, you should have a dig ticket. Plan your work. How long are you gonna be there? What type of equipment you're going to be using? How many people are gonna be on the job? That makes everything run so much smoother, especially if you're calling in to our service. It just makes the whole process flow so, so good. Now, you see the photo there of the white circle. Pre-marking in white became law around 2016 here in the state of Ohio, and, and that's a good thing. Here's a lady, she wants to plant a tree in the backyard. Um, goes out, puts a circle there, here's where I wanna go at, want to plant the tree. Remember, when you have a fixed mark, like that white circle, the locator is to give you an additional 25 foot around that circle in all directions. And that's a good thing because people, I think you all can, can feel this. If my wife and I were doing this in our backyard, the day it comes for me to dig that hole, she's gonna say, I would like it to be 10 foot more to the left. Well, luckily it's already located over there. So there would be no issue in moving that tree 10 foot to the left, okay? So that's a good thing. And you wanna remember that, that with a fixed mark, you have 25 foot in all directions. And I also wanna make you aware, if we were doing this in person, I would uh, give you an excavator manual, which is a great, great tool. But see that up there at the top, the second bullet point that says Ohio Revised Code 3781.29. That's the law that tells you that you must pre-mark in white. Now, if you had the excavator manual, you could go to pre-marking in white, you could read a short paragraph on 3781.29, and then I'm gonna show you here in a few minutes where you can look at the whole law. And it's just a tip off to get you going in the right direction. And I'd probably look at the law at least once every week. And I use everything I can to get me to the right section as fast as I possibly can. Remember, when you're marking in white, you should use a top chalk base paint flag stake or any other method to let us let the locator know where you're going to be excavating. But there's four times you do not have to pre-mark in white. One. If you're working on Main Street between 1st Street and 2nd Street, that's a precise location. You do not have to pre-mark in white. Two, the excavator and the affected utility had an on-site pre-construction meeting. So, in other words, I'm the locator. I come to your job site. We walk your job. You tell me where you're going to be excavating. You don't have to pre-mark in white. Trust me. That's the best and the easiest. And remember there too, you're starting to network with that locator. You're starting to bond with him. And it usually 99% of the time works out when you form that relationship with that locator. Number three, the excavation involves replacing a pole that's within five foot of the location of an existing utility pole. And the fourth and final, if your job is in a busy intersection, on a road where there could be a concern with vehicular traffic, your safety or you putting white paint on the road might confuse a motorist, no pre-marking in white is required. Other than that, we must do it. Okay, click, call, or tap the app. Again, there's the revised code that says you must call 48 hours before you begin your excavation, excluding Saturday, Sunday, and legal holiday, okay? And there's our phone app, which I'll get into depth with you on that here in a few more slides. But from the previous slide, remember when I told you about the law, you could see there on the phone app that you click on that and that gives you the entire Ohio Revised Code. And if you want to know right now on how to do that, you just go to your app store and type in Ohio 811, no space. It's a great tool and I'm going to show you some of the functions of that here later on. Each excavator has to have their own ticket. This one's real easy, people. In Ohio, he who has a shovel in his hand must have a ticket number. 
So if there's two companies on the same job, each company needs to call in. Company one, they might not be going that deep and all of their utilities at that site might be a no conflict. Company two might be going down three foot, four foot, and every utility is a conflict for him. So the locators have to go out and locate. Again, he who has the shovel in his hand must have a ticket number. This is pretty cool. This is the locate work order, and it's in your excavator manual. It's on our website, but this if, this is if you're calling in. And this is exactly how our operators ask the questions. And I'm telling you, they do a fantastic job on taking your dig notification. And what do you think the most important two things are on here? The two most important are the county you're doing your excavation and the place. On this right here, you can see that it's Goshen Stone Lick is where the excavation is going to be. And the reason this is so important, 90% of the time when you're calling us, our CSR, our operator, is looking up the exact location of your excavation. They want to make darn sure that it's right. So know where you're at and they can help you. They can hold your hand and they can walk you through it. I live in Franklin County and I'm telling you, I have to get out the Franklin County map every time I call one in, unless it's here at home, because Franklin County is so broken up. You don't know if you're in the city. You don't know if you're in the township. You don't know where you're at. It's so broken up. So it's very important to know your county and your place. And let's look down there at the bottom where it says comments, area pre-marked with white flags, that's good. And please locate 25 foot in all directions of the pre-marks. Well, they're gonna do that because I told you that on this previous slide that they're to give you the additional 25 feet. But if I'm working in a backyard or if I'm working around where I know there's pedestals, I will always ask for that. And let me tell you why. Because if there's a pedestal there, the drops, the telephone drops, the cable TV drops, they take off in all directions. And that way you'll know where they're going. So ask for that additional. It really, really helps, especially if you're doing landscaping or something in your backyard, okay? Or front yard, because some utilities are out in front now. And this is the thing to remember. Hopefully we don't have to remember this until next December, January. But if you know, that it's going to be snowing, you are allowed to pre-mark with pink surveyor's paint. So you would add that in the comments. Area is pre-marked with pink surveyor's paint. And that's if you know snow is going to be coming, which we had to, I had to tell people that just what, uh, two weeks ago on a Saturday when we had snow. Okay, this is really neat for me. And I had nothing to do with making this slide. But the most important thing on this slide here is bullet point number two. A description of where you're excavating is like an X on a treasure map. Okay, please remember that. And what's neat for me is you can see here's a person that called in a ticket in Franklin County, Brown Township, and the jobs at Cole and Fetter Road and they're going to be working on the east side of the intersection. That circle there in purple is the safe dig box. So all that is where the excavation is going to be. But here they're being really specific and saying it's on the east side of the in intersection. Now, here's what's cool. I'll bet of the people on this presentation, many of you have been to this exact location. Because if you take that county road to the north, less than a quarter mile, it dead ends into eastbound 70, right before mile marker 90. And why am I saying that? Because there's two cell towers sitting there that I've worked on in my career. And it was just chance that the office made this slide and put it in there like that. Pretty neat. Okay, CSR verification. That's our operators. Listen very, very closely. If you're calling in, that operator will read that ticket back to you. And once you say, yes, that's where I'm at, yes, submit that ticket, 
That ticket now becomes a legal document. It does stand up in a court of law. I've used them. So make darn sure that it's right. And always have your reference number slash ticket number with you at all times. And I'm going to show you how you can do that on your phone in our Ohio 811 app. We notify our members, but remember, not all utilities are registered with Ohio 811. If you run into them, the non-members, please give me a call. I promise you, myself or my teammates will go knock on their door to talk to them about becoming a member to make Ohio a safer place again to live and to work. One success story I've had here recently. Back in September, the ODOT ITS group, that's the group that runs their fiber all over the state of Ohio, the whole state, they become a member. They're usually on the interstates, the interchanges, the state routes. The fiber optic runs their weather channels. It runs their message boards. It's everywhere. They became a member, and I'm telling you, it is huge to have them aboard. And they're doing a great job of managing the process and doing the, the utility locates. Uh, one other one that's not, if we have any people on here from up north, one that I would love to get in my time is the uh, Ohio Turnpike Commission is a non-member. There's 241 miles of unprotected utilities. Uh, they're going to be a tough nut to crack, but hopefully I can get in there and make that happen. Okay, you guys all know to wait 48 hours before you begin your excavation, excluding Saturday, Sunday, and a legal holiday. Okay, check your positive response. This is very, report, very important to know and to do. Um, if you're a professional excavator, you should already know about it. And what positive response is, is when you call in a dig, the utilities have 48 hours, the first 48 hours of that ticket life to put in there what they're doing. 001, no conflict. 002, marked up to privately owned. There's 10 responses they can put in there. If you see a 999, that means they haven't looked at it. I would call us back and say, why is not the telephone mark? Why is not the water mark? Because trust me, in my experience, that second call, that good faith call, that goodwill call has always won in a court of law. And remember, every time that you call us, it's a legal document and we keep it for you for seven years, okay? And if you are a professional excavator, it's your responsibility to check the positive response. If you don't have a phone, if you don't have a computer, you can call that 800 number, but you best be able to write real, real fast. <clears throat> This is one of the things, the next bullet point that I really, really want you to focus on. And I really want you to, to start doing this, perform your site assessment. When I started back in the utility business in 1970, that was one of the first things they taught me. George, here's where you're working today. We want you to walk a few hundred feet that way, looking down on your way back, looking up. Come back to the spot. Walk a few hundred feet that way, looking down on your way back, looking up. You will not believe the utilities that you will find that did not get located. Remember, when the locator goes there, he's looking at that one spot, right? He's looking for pedestals or cans to hook his locator onto. If he doesn't do a site assessment and, work and walk a couple more hundred feet to see those laterals going up and down the poles, he's gonna miss them, okay? So please do your site assessment. I mean, you walk around in your subdivision, you might see a stamp for the water line, how far it is off the curb there. Uh, look at utility poles, there might be marks on poles that might be in yellow paint and have like a three. So you know the gas line's three foot off the base of that pole. These are cool things to do. I wanna impress upon you to start doing your site assessment. One quick story. This ha happened to a county engineer a few months back. They were going out to do their job that morning. Before they left the garage, they checked their positive response. It said 001, no conflict. They went out to the job site. They backed the backhoe off the trailer, 
on his third scoop, he got into high, high voltage electricity. People trust me, they were lucky that no one got hurt. More than that, they were lucky that no one died. So when the management team come out to do their damage investigation, the first thing the management team said to the backhoe operator, did you do your site assessment? And he said, no, I didn't, but I checked my positive response and it said 001, no conflict. So the next week I was out there going over the whole process with them again about call before you dig and how you can do the job safely. But here's a guy that because his positive response said no conflict, he felt that that locator did his job 100% correctly at that site. And he did not. Again, luckily, no one got hurt. Luckily. And the last bullet point, dig with care. Dig in a safe and prudent manner all the time. All the time. In the tolerance zone or not in the tolerance zone. Okay, this is cool. Remember, I've been talking about your, uh, your responses to the positive response. And here they are. We uh, cleaned them up last uh, March of 2021. And it's a good thing. Remember me saying your 001, no conflict, 002, marked up to privately owned. The one I would like for you to focus on is 008, a design notification. This is one of my passions too, is to, make, is to get this fixed while I'm still here, while I'm still spreading the news to call before you dig. When a designer calls in a design ticket, the utilities have 10 days to get back to that designer with marks in the field or as builds. And as you know, most utilities don't have very good as builds that will not pass. And you can see there too that there's two laws. You have the public and the private law right there, 3781 and the 153 law. Okay. This, you should have this filled out by the utilities within the first 48 hours of that ticket life. And on the, I wanna to touch too on 004, the locator coordination. That's when the locator calls you and talks about the locate. That should be done in the first 48 hours. The 004 does not, or none of these other numbers, close out the ticket. The only way to close out a dig ticket is 001, 002, and 003. One of those three marks should be in there in the first 48 hours of that ticket life. Ooh, here's a good one. Trenchless technologies. Hopefully you people all know what trenchless technologies are. It's the one that they put in the utilities and there's not much restoral, which is a good thing. I just read in a trade magazine last month that over 75% of the excavations in America are now done with this trenchless technologies, okay? And, and that's it's a pretty cool tool. When it's done right, it's excellent. But around 2016, we got some laws for the guys that do directional drilling. Cause the last time the law was changed was like in 1990, there was nothing in there about directional drilling, but we did get these, like I said, around 2016. So listen up, and I have a great story on this first one. When a directional driller is crossing an existing utility, they must pothole down to the depth of the drill. Okay, I didn't say find the utilities. I said they must pothole down to the depth of the drill so they can see the head going through clean and green, okay? Quick story, this happened a couple months back. I got a call from my buddy that does directional drilling for a living. He said, George, I got a question to ask you about directional drilling and the laws. I said, why are you asking me? You know it just as well as I do. So tell me what is up, what's going down? He was on a job up in Northwest Ohio and it was in a city and he was doing a directional drill. And when he gets to his job, he goes to the job and he sees a blue line, okay? 
Now that's supposed to tell us all that we have water there, right? Now me, I would have probably questioned that because of the Ohio Universal Marking Standards on the marks. They must be the right color paint. If it's bigger than two inches, they should be telling you that. They should tell you material type if known, and they should also show ownership on their marks. If that's not happening, you can file a complaint with the PUCO. But my buddy saw the line, he knew he had a water line, he potholed down to the depth of his drill, no water line, which that makes sense. He goes on, 30 foot more he goes. The operator feels something on the head of his bore machine. He backs off. People, this is a true story. Five minutes later, here comes water out of the ground. So my buddy calls 811. He said, city water, you better get out here. We think we hit your line. So here comes the guy from the water department. He pulls up in his pickup truck and he gets out. He points a finger at my guy and he says, I hope you have great insurance. I hope you have deep pockets because you just hit the only water feed we have for the entire city, a 36 inch high pressure water line, and you're gonna pay to fix it. My buddy goes, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Your line is 30 foot away. This is a true story, people. The guy from the city said, oh, it don't matter where we put that line. We put that down there and you have to go find it. Well, my buddy educated him real quick on, he had one line with no size. My buddy's responsible for 18 inches each side of that line. My buddy's never heard another word about it. We were up there the next week training the whole city on the call before you dig process. People, that's a true story. How can a whole water department say and believe that it really doesn't matter where they put their lines? Drives me crazy. Okay, so the next one. If you're a directional driller and you're in the tolerance zone, which is 18 inches each side of the mark, correct? You must pothole at the beginning every 100 feet and at the end of the job. This will cut down on many, many damages. And if you're not in the tolerance zone, you must pothole at the beginning and at the end of your job. And I tell you, this, this makes me happy or makes me excited when I see a gas replacement job in a subdivision and, and the guys go out there and they're doing their directional drilling and they have potholes on every gas line that's going to houses. That is really cool for me as a professional excavator. And then to go back and see, you know, the little, the straw in everyone's yard because that directional driller did his job the right way. <clears throat> Here's what we can laugh at. We're talking about directional drilling. Do you believe that this directional driller had no idea that he was in the basement of an office building? He never felt it. And I can't believe that the, the spotter didn't know he was doing it. But the funny thing about this is he still has no idea he's in this basement. Look, he's still throwing mud to it to get it through there easier. The mud helps for it to, to continue on. Crazy, crazy. Emergencies. At Ohio 811, we have three types of tickets. We have a 48 hour ticket, we have a 10 day design ticket, and we have a large project complex project ticket. Notice I said nothing about emergencies, nothing. Because we do not have an emergency ticket, but we do have this in Ohio. If you have a true emergency today, you must call us. Pretty soon you'll be able to do it on ID. But you call us and there's a message on the phone. If you have an emergency, please hit nine. Boop. You hit nine. Then it says, if you have a true emergency, you're on the way to the job or you're at the emergency, hit three. So you hit three. Then you go to the front of the line. I don't care if there's 200 people on hold, you're gonna be the next one picked up. The operator's gonna say, you have an emergency? You're gonna say, of course, yes. And then the operator's gonna read the definition of an emergency and you will say yes again. Remember people, 
don't tell a little white lie because you're being recorded and we'll keep your ticket and your recording for seven years for your protection. But don't tell a little white lie. Then we have an agreement, a gentleman's agreement, a handshake that the utilities will do their best to get back to you within two hours. And what I mean by that, maybe they'll give you a phone call. Maybe they'll come to the site. Maybe they'll call you and say, hey, I'm four counties away. My ETA is. They'll do it. It works pretty darn good. It truly, truly does. But here's what you have to remember. And people in my career, I've been on so many of these. And when I was doing them, I would have to get out of bed because as you know, they all happen at 2 a.m. or five o'clock on a Friday night. But I would have to get out of bed and physically visit every one of these sites. And the one there with the power pole used to scare me to death because you know you don't know if it's hot or not hot. But here's what you have to remember if someone on here is dealing with emergencies. Check your positive response because in today's world, if I was still responsible for damages, I would roll out of bed at 2 a.m. I would look on my computer and see if I have a conflict. If I do not have a conflict, I can populate my positive response with a 001 and I am still fulfilling my obligation to the gentleman's agreement, the handshake. Please check your positive response and we'll get into that a little bit more in just a few short slides. Oh, here's again one of my patients, the design ticket. There's a lot of bullet points over there, but remember we talked about this on the positive response. When a utility answers a design ticket for the design engineer, he must either have marks in the field or ask bills. I asked one of my design buddies, I said, hey, give me an example of one of your jobs that you called in a design ticket and what you got back from the utilities. Here's what he gave me, four examples. The only one that would really suffice that would work is the one there on the right. As you can see, there's measurements off of center line, off of edge of pavement. There's even a measurement when it goes back into the road right away. These other three, they're not worth the printed, the paper they're printed on. And this is what the design engineer has to do his job off, job off of. If we could get the marks in the field, the as built, there wouldn't be so many change orders. There wouldn't be so many holdups when, oh, this utility was supposed to be moved and we ran into a gas line. It was supposed to be moved. It was supposed to be a no conflict because the design engineer, if he has great as built or, or marks, he can design around a lot of conflicts. Again, if the design engineer, if you're on here and this stuff is not happening the correct way, you have the possibility, ability to file a complaint with the PUCO. Okay, we've been talking about excavators all this time, but here is the only slide that we're going to talk about utilities. This is all the utilities that ha have to do to be accountable. And trust me, the law, it's about accountability for everyone that's involved in it. So the utilities are required to be a member of the one call. They're required to mark in 48 hours. They must respond to a design ticket the proper way in 10 working days. And they're required to do their positive response. That's it, okay? So we've covered a lot already, but we have a few more to go. How do you contact us? Of course, all of you should know that 811 is a national one call number. You can be in anywhere in America, dial 811, and it will take you to that state's one call. In fact, one of my buddies told me yesterday, I was doing a talk for, he uh, is has a place down in Florida and he wants to put in a drain. So he called 811, of course it went to Ohio, and he says, I would like to be hooked up with, Ohio, with Florida 811. The Ohio people switched him over to Florida. He got his dig ticket in that way with a call. How cool is that? But I want to talk to our about our remote ticket entry. 
iDig is for professional excavators. It takes approximately one hour of training to do the iDig process. Okay, and again, that's for professional excavators. If you're working at home and you want to do it on the internet, you may use eDig. No training involved. It's very, very simple. I probably use it three to four times a year here at, at our residence where my wife and I live. But it is so simple. And people, I'm really stressing trying to have people use the remote ticket entry, iDig and eDig, so we don't have so many people backed up trying to call in. Because if you try and call on a Monday or Friday, it's tough to get in. There is a wait time. Right now, we finally hit 60% of our ticket volume is now coming in with remote ticket entry on iDig, eDig, ticket updater, and so on. It is a good thing, and it's really, really worth it. On iDig, you have long-term ticket storage. You can physically draw where you're going to be excavating on our maps, which are 99.9% .9 correct. They're awesome. Remember though, if you do do the maps, print them off and put them in your job folder because the locator does not get your map. And you're probably saying, well, that's stupid. Well, there's so much, that would be so much data that we couldn't transport that over the lines. But what I always say, if you print off your map, put on your ticket, if map is required and you have a place that's hard to understand, if map is required, please call and I will fax or email you the maps of my dig site. So it is a great thing. Oh, here's my favorite, the app. There's the app there on the left. And the one there that I use every single day is near ticket. When you click on near ticket, which is in the third row, the third one over from the left, it will pick up every dig ticket that was called into our service in the last 28 days within a thousand foot of that phone. This is on your phone. It's awesome. So here's one where we have an example up in Lorraine. There's the ticket right below the four tickets that goes out to the world. The purple there is where the job is going to be. That's your safe dig box. And on the right there screen, you can see that all the no conflicts, the only conflict, the only one that needed to be located was Ohio Edison's line. And it was done by a contract locating company. Okay, this is cool. And the one on the right, if you have your ticket number, you can click on positive response there on the left on your on your app and this will pop up and tell you the same exact thing that the positive response near ticket does those two things mirror each other remember me telling you about the county engineer that checked his ticket and it was 001 he did this at his office at his garage in the morning before they left for the job the one on the right okay but they mirror each other. And I have a nickname for this. I call near ticket nosy neighbor. Because if I come home tonight and there's paint and flags in my neighborhood, I'm going to stop the vehicle. I'm going to see what's going on so I know exactly what's going on here in the subdivision. And while we have the app up, remember me telling you about the excavator manual. There it is. It's a great manual. It's it's awesome. Again, if we were in person, you would get one, but the whole manual is right there. Again, if you need the law, it's on the top row. If you um, need me, I'm down there in the bottom left corner, public outreach, I'm the guy in the middle, and I'll show you a slide on that in a minute. If, if you do iDig, which you can see on there, and you take your training, you will get a login and a password, and you will also be able to do those two Newton features, Newton Home and Newton Ticket Search. It's good. You only need your login and password for the two, the two Newtons. Other than that, everything else is already there. Hey, Here's George, the location. How, how about yeah. uh, taking a, a breather and uh, we got a question in the question box for you. Okay. And it says, uh, if ODOT, 
wants to dig, would they fall into I dig or E dig? Is there a preference for how ODOT would contact OOPS? Yeah, ODOT's a professional excavator, so they would use I dig. All right. Well, there you okay. go, Michelle. There's your answer. Okay. All right. You can get back to it now. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Here's an example of a location that was marked perfectly with the Ohio Universal Marking Standards. Okay. It tells you if it's bigger than two inches. Remember, your tolerance zone is 18 inches from those outside lines. This is a good locate, people. And you can look on farther there to where there's some flags there on the other side of the intersection. That is a great locate. Here's one, a guy wanted to work around his uh, mailbox. He went out and put the white little flags. It said, here's where I'm going to be excavating. And you can see that the utilities come marked perfectly. And you can also see where the telephone's shooting off there across the road with the mark there on the curb. And these are the things that I tell you that you should look for when you do your site assessment. If you look real close on that curb, you can see that that's been marked before. There's some paint marks there that have almost went away, but they're still there. And this is a great location of pre-marking white and with a good locate. Okay, let's talk about the tolerance zone. The top one there on the right is the tolerance zone. The facility is two inches or less. Your total tolerance zone is 36 inches. Remember, the mark is the approximate location of the facility. What they're telling you is that it's in that 36 inches. Okay. Then the next one's a duck bank. The duck bank's 24 inches. So you would take an 18 and an 18 from those outside lines. Tolerance zone is 60 inches. If you hit it in that 60 inches and you damage something, you're probably paying for it. Okay if it was marked correctly. Here's your color-coded card. Please remember this. This is in the excavator manual too. What I want you to remember is that red utility will kill you. The yellow utility will kill you. The orange utility will bankrupt you. If you were to hit a fiber optic cable with a lot of business traffic, your bill could be as much as $150,000 a minute a minute. And I love to tell this story. I tell it every time I do one of these presentations. I was doing one of these talks over in uh, Jefferson County way years ago. And it was the county over there on the Ohio River. I was talking to the soil and water people. And I said how expensive it could be. And this guy raises his hand. He says, George, 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 I got to say something. I got to say something. And he stood up and there was about 40 people in the room. And he pointed his finger at everybody in that room. And he said, you believe what George just said about how expensive it can be. He said his next door neighbor was putting in a new mailbox. He did not call our service. Putting in that new mailbox, he cut a fiber optic cable the size of my thumb. And guess what John Q homeowner got in his new mailbox? John Q homeowner was billed $1.2 million. It's a true story. I'd have been packing my bag and climbing that fence from this side, if you know what I mean. And I had a buddy that cut one here in Southern Delaware County a few years back. His bill was 3.2 million. Again, they will come after you and it gets to be very expensive. And remember too, on these colors, the pink, if you know it's going to be snowing, you can pre-mark with that pink paint. Here's some marks. The one there on the left is pre-marking in white. Okay, you would mark that and you tell them exactly where you have two foot to put your utility in. The ones on the right, the top one there is one owned by Ohio Edison. Notice, no inch, so you know it's less than two inches. The next one is a three phase and your tolerance zone is 18 inches from those outside lines. So you would add 18 and 18 to that. And most of the time when you see three phases marked, they're usually bigger than what they really are. But as a professional excavator, you have, you have to observe the marks. 
observe your tolerance zone. Okay, here's a gas line. The top one there is a steel Columbia gas line. No inch, so it's two inches or less. The next one is a four inch steel Columbia gas line. What does that mean to your tolerance zone? That means rather than having a 36 inch, you have a 40 inch, okay? A 40 inch. And remember the marks in approximate location, they're telling you it's in that 40 inches, okay? Now, I could take you to places in Columbus here that have these marks on the right. A four inch steel Columbia gas line inside a 12 inch diameter pipe. So you would add the 12 to the 36 for a 48. There's, they're all over, they truly are. And there's some of them too that have AEP lines in them because when there's high voltage, they have to put them in a bigger pipe and put oil in there to keep them cool. Now the next one there on the right scares me. It says it's a four inch steel Columbia gas line inside an unknown pipe. I would definitely back truck that, hand expose it, find out what you have before you get going because the gas comes in, I have no idea how big it is. You better find it out, okay? Now these, I want you to remember this on when you see these, you're probably going to have to look at your excavator manual to understand it if you're not working with these every day. When you see a diamond, a diamond denotes duct, D-U-C-T, okay? So that top one there tells you there's three duct. When you see one dashed line, that one dashed line is telling you that the duct are two inches or smaller, okay? Please remember that. Now let's go on to the next one. You see that duct bank. The diamond tells you, listen up, that there are eight facilities in that duct bank. It don't tell you how many duct are there. It's telling you how many facilities are there. There could be 24 duct, but only eight of them have facilities in them. Okay. Now, the saving grace on this mark is for excavators that are on this presentation your tolerance zone is still the same. It's 18 inches from those outside lines on both sides. That's your saving grace, okay? Then moving over, back to my design ticket, back to my design engineer. You know, he built this building, he built this shopping center. He's got to figure out a way to get the utilities in. And this would be a way that he's going to take duck out to the road right away, so the utilities can come to that duct bank, pull their facilities in to feed that office building. And here you can see that there's eight facilities in this duct bank and it's multiple utilities, Ohio Edison and AT&T. Again, back to the design engineer. Here's an offset mark. When I located, I use these all the time. And this is what I want you to start looking for when you're doing your site assessment. Let's say on this mark right here that you're going to be milling the road. You're going to be destroying your marks. So either the excavator or the locator says, hey, I got a clean and green sidewalk right next to this gas line. So you would put the marks in the sidewalk and it's a four inch steel Dominion gas line, eight foot north of that horizontal line. Use them all, I used to use them all the time. You wouldn't have to go back. The marks stay fresh, the marks stay there for a long, long time. In fact, when I located, I got to use a lead-based paint. They would last for a long, long, long time. But this is an offset mark. Look for those. Look for those marks on utility poles. Even before you start the job, it'd be a good tip off that there are utilities there. This here's new to the Ohio Universal Marking Standards. Uh, we were asked to put this into the marking standards two years ago. The first one on the left is a back tied loop service. This is when they do the locate off of an as built. The M means located off as built. And on this one, when known by records or documentation, the symbol shall be one half circle equaling 36 inches in width and 36 inches in length unless greater amount is identified. Okay, 
I'll be honest, I have not seen one of these in central Ohio. I have not. I have gotten reports from north, up north, northeast, where they're putting these out. And sometimes they have CYA marks where they might make it bigger than the 36 inches. Again, the excavator must respect the marks. Okay, I have a great example for the next one where the orange with the M is. Let me tell you this story real quick and why I believe in this and why I think it works. Here where we live in our flower beds, we used to have two Bradford pear trees. And you know, when you plant a Bradford pear tree, you're only gonna have it for 20 to 25 years because they're so beautiful and they have so many leaves and they're gonna go down sooner or later with a high wind. We had two of them here in the front of the house. We lost both of them within, within three months of each other. So when the one went down on the right, right side of the house in the flower bed, I went out there and I, before I even called Ohio Utilities Protection Service, I looked and I said, gosh darn it, that gas line is right under that tree, that stump. And since it was in the flower bed, I had to grind the stump out, correct, or have it done. So I wanted to put this to the test. I called Columbia Gas and I asked them, do you have an as built on my gas line? She said, George, give me a couple minutes. I'll go look. She came back and she said, George, we do have an as built on your gas line from the shutoff to the meter. She said, go to the corner of your house, pull off a tape, 44 foot exactly, and go three foot to the right. I did that and very softly with my spade, about two inches down was my gas shut off. It was a perfect straight line measurement, SLM to my gas meter. It was perfect. So in my experience, not just this one time, but other times I've seen this, when they mark that with an M in a circle, it works, it works. Oh, and yes, I only got to remove half of the stump because the gas line was right underneath of it. Now, when you see this too, they will have a dotted line going from the shutoff to the meter. You're just not gonna see that M, you're gonna have a dotted line also. They will connect the two for you, but it does work. Okay, real quick, you know to contact us 48 hours ahead. Check your positive response, we went over that. Preserve your mark so you don't have to call us back. And if you do, you can use Ticket Updater. All you need is your ticket number and your name. Don't work off someone else's ticket, right? He who has a shovel in his hand must have a ticket number. Again, not everyone's registered with us. If you run into them, let us know. Utilities may not run in a straight line. Listen up, people. When a transmission line crosses a road or street, they are required by federal law to put a matchstick on both sides of the road. A matchstick is those plastic tubes. It tells you who owns it, tells you their telephone number, and it tells you the product it's carrying. But remember, the matchstick does not have to be sitting right on top of that transmission line. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be in their easement, and it's telling you there's something there. If you do not have an inspector with you, Call that number and get one out there. You want to be very, very safe around transmission lines and every utility line, everyone. Don't assume depth. What's Ohio say about depth of a utility? In Ohio, depth of a utility is only guaranteed on the day of installation. Everything has a recommended depth on that day, but it's only guaranteed until midnight. So when you guys are out there excavating, when you're doing your jobs, when you're working in your flower beds, I want you to remember this. That utility can be anywhere from heaven to hell. And most of the time they're closer to heaven. That's how they get by doing your telephone drop, your cable TV drop, when like most of them are only a couple inches deep. The recommended depth on those are eight to 12 inches, okay? And how long's your ticket good for when you call us? In Ohio, the paint and the flags are good forever, as long as you maintain your paint and flags. You must start that job in the first 10 days. And here's my recommendation, my CYA. 
as long as you're on that job every day and there's paint and flags out ahead of you, you continue on, you continue to make hay, okay? But listen up, if you get pulled off of that job and you're gone for two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, and you come back to that job and you say, George said, if the paint and flags are there, I'm good to go. I don't have to call in a ticket. This is a good ticket. George says, no, if you're not there every day, call back in, update your ticket, because I've already proved to you with directional drilling, they could come in and do it and you would never know. You would never know. In the summer of 2020, here where we live, they replaced our backbone AEP cable with directional drilling. They had a pit at the beginning of the block and they had a pit at the end of the block. In our block, there's 18 houses on this side, there's 20 houses on the back side. But again, they only had the two pits and of course the pit that they joined them to was in my backyard. Out of all those yards, I was the only yard that they had to do the restoral. My neighbors had no idea that the backbone AEP cable had been replaced, okay? So please, if you're not there every day, update your ticket, call back in. And of course, report all damages. If you nick it, if you scrape it, if you damage it, call them. They wanna fix it then. They don't wanna fault in six months, 12 months or 18 months. Let them know, they will thank you. Now, we're gonna spend just a couple minutes on Senate Bill 378 that went into effect on January the 1st of 2016. This is the new thing and it's the new bill. It's awesome. It really is. It helped. And we are gonna start looking on how we can maybe enhance the law. Again, there's a meeting at the end of this month to start looking at that. Okay, Senate, Senate Bill 378 provides for the enforcement of Ohio's underground damage prevention laws. And I, you've heard me say this already. It's about everybody involved being accountable. That's what it's about. And it covers both laws, the 153 and the 3781, both the public and the private, okay? So remember that if you ever have to file a complaint or want to file a complaint, you have to go to what law it talks to or refers back to. And here's a, this is a hard part about it. And this is why, I field phone calls all the time on this when people want to file a complaint. It's a complaint driven process. You have to be the aggrieved party to file a complaint. And a lot of times this is where I'll get a call and people ask me, am I the aggrieved party? And here's the example I give them. Let's say here where my wife and I live, our gas line got broke, it got cut, it's not working. I call a plumber. The plumber come out, he says, yeah, I'll do your job, I'll fix your gas line, but I have to call in a dig ticket. So he calls in, but he doesn't express to them that it's an emergency. So it's a 48 hour ticket. The plumber comes back in 48 hours and the utilities in our yard are not marked. Who is the aggrieved party? The plumber who didn't get his marks or my wife and I here in the house with no gas for 48 hours. The aggrieved party is the plumber because he's the one that called in the ticket. And you do have 90 days to file on that, okay? And when it's filed, remember, do it right. Give them all you can. If you need photos, give them photos with writing on them of what they are because when you call in a complaint to the PUCO, that's all they have. They do not do investigations, okay? Then when they take your uh, complaint, they'll put give you a number, they'll assign you a number, and they will forward that on to the Underground Technical Committee. These are the people that decide on where it goes. And who are those? There's 17 industry experts, okay? And they make the decision who was at fault, and there'll probably be training, a process improvement plan the first time, or it could be more involved. First time you could be fined with training, education, or $2,500 fine. Second time could be $5,000. Third time could be 
10,000. And the worst part, if you were a professional excavator and you were labeled as a persistent non-complier, how much work do you really think you'll get? They are collecting monies on people now. I do not know, I can't tell you how much money they have, but they are collecting monies. And there is one excavator, professional excavator that I know owes these people $12,500 because he didn't pay his first time didn't pay his second, didn't pay his third. So the attorney general is going after that gentleman and his company. If you're the agreed party, the alleged responsible party, you have 30 days once you find out about that to file a reconsideration, okay? So if you're ever involved with one, and all this is on our website or on the PUCO website under uh, damage prevention, okay? And here's the cool part, the monies that they collect, they're not for the PUCO. They're not for the Ohio 811 people. They're for us. Let's say you and I want to promote damage prevention. So we ask for some of those monies. We can get billboard time, radio advertising, spend it wisely, and it's pretty cool. Now, you can see here on the left where back in 2016, everyone that uses the one call process except homeowners was charged $25. That's how the process was funded. As you see, you've never had one of those since 2016 because the monies collected have been able to fund the process. When this was all be, being drawn up in 2015, the PUCO thought that they would have to hire employees to, to work the process. They have not. I do look for them, if you're a utility owner, for this to come maybe this year with them asking for more money, but it cannot exceed $50. It cannot. And of course, if you want to read about it, you can go to www.ohio811.org to read about the Senate bill. Um, it's really, really interesting. And people, the Underground Technical Committee has been together now for six years. And I think the first couple of years they were trying to find their footing, but I think they're doing an excellent job. I truly do. That's my personal opinion. But I think in the six years, I've only missed one of their meetings. I can see how they're how they're doing it. You know what what they're laying down the groundwork. And here's my team members. If you need us, call us. I'm the guy in the middle. Most of the time you have an issue, I can probably fix it with your first phone call. If not, I can pass it off to one of the team members there. And questions, any questions? We had any Ray in the box? Yeah, we've uh, got a couple questions here. I know we kind of went over, um, but everybody's still on, so we might as well keep going. So um, the question, if we don't get you answered, um, uh, I'll be emailing you responses from George directly. Uh, or they but, can um, if they would like. Go ahead. Yeah, so Michelle has a follow-up question to her previous one about... Um, um, Let's see, does George give in-person training or information sharing? Absolutely. And, and so uh, she's with ODOT, so she might be reaching out to you. Michelle, she where also, you at? what district you in? Could, do you know, Ray? Uh, uh, she'll, she'll let me know. I have her information here. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I can hook her up with one of the guys. Okay, and she also wants to know, uh, let's see. Well, I think that was her other question. Then we have uh, Dan. He He wants to know. Uh, E-Dig is advertised as for homeowners, uh, but can or should it be also used by design engineers? Design engineers? Hmm. Like when they're e planning a e project. Let me, E-Dig is for homeowners or a single address. But let's just say, Dan, if, you know, you were using E-Dig and you're a professional excavator, like somebody that puts in... Uh, dog fences or something like that, our people would know that and they would try and steer you towards iDig, okay? So eDig, yeah, is for mostly for homeowners. You cannot use that on the design side. All right. Now, Tony wants to know, what would be the best approach to get both physical markings to survey and plans for design purposes? Well, it's, well you stress on your ticket when you call in, Tony, that, you know, 
the law states that you should have paint in the field or as built. Now, did he ask if he wanted both? Ray? Yeah, to get both physical and physical markings to survey and plans for design purposes. Okay, they only have to give you one on a design ticket when they respond back to you. Okay. They only could so only have to put do in two one. tickets then, one for physical markings, and well, another one. Yeah, plans, my, good question, uh, Ray. Most of the time, if you're going to go out and survey it, um, you know, that's a 48 hour ticket because if you're surveying, you're usually driving pins, uh, lath, or something like that. That would be a 48 hour ticket, and then you would have the 10 day design ticket. All right. Okay. And then we have Steve. Um, says, how does a member of OOPS verify all of their contact information um, is it to make sure it's up to date? Oh, you mean, I, I don't wonder if he means his or all the utilities he's excavating around. You can uh, um, call our membership department and they can tell you who's down as the member rep. And hopefully, I don't know what part of the state you are in, but my teammates and I, we try and get to everybody. Uh, we do pretty good at doing it at least once a year or so. So if you haven't had a visit, something isn't right. But you can call membership at 800-311-3692, extension 4736. All right. And then Michelle wants a follow-up question here. She's in Akron, so she was with ODOT District 4 in Akron. And then she also wants to know, uh, how do professional excavators get the iDig training? Oh, easy. You go onto our website, Ohio 811, right on the front screen there, it will have iDig, click on that and it walks you through. And you can sign up for it. All right, Steve. Uh, Steve is a member located in Southwest Ohio for that previous question. Does he tell you what company? He probably will. In just a second. Um, uh, Steve is with the city of Mason. City of Mason. Let's see here. Do you got any, Steve? I'll get back to you. I'm yeah, I have right. his information. I got. I can look at it here real quick. Okay. <laughs> I just recently taught a work zone class for the city of Mason. They're really on the ball down there. They got a good high school baseball team, too. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Yeah. The uh, Reds might need a few players this year. Boy, don't you know that. <laughs> city of Mason. Hang on. I'm right here. I'm in my G's. City of Mason. City of Mason. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, City of Mason. It says Mr. Leon Ed Smith is your member rep. And our guy was with you 69 days ago. And he was at 3200 Mason Morrow, Millgrove Drive, Mason, Ohio. Well, That's there you have it, Steve, straight yep. from the horse's mouth. That's correct. If that's not right, then call that membership department, our membership department. All and, right. Well, I think that's all of our questions. But uh, if anybody feels like they have more questions, you can contact me directly, Ray Brushhart at Ohio LTAP, and uh, I'll reach out to George. And uh, with that, uh, we've gone a little bit over today, but I appreciate everybody hanging on. Looks like 140 people still stayed on. but. Um, I guess we could sign off now, Paul. I want to thank everybody for taking time out of the day and uh, participating in this. And I will be sending out certificates to everybody. So. Can I can I end with this way? Sure. You know, I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope you, you know, heaven to hell for death. Ticket life can go on forever. Uh, do your site assessments. But my main thing, people, is let's all go home and have dinner with our families every single night. That's what I'm about. And that's really what this whole thing's about. Okay? Be safe. All right. Thank you so much, George. You're welcome.
You're welcome. Thanks, Paul.